Hey guys, Sebastian here with another Cardano update, this time going over uh, the March 22nd technical report update. So going right into it, the first thing is just kind of like this GitHub, uh, or just a GitHub, like some Git cleanup where there's like a playing with branches, not too interesting. These are features they've already finished, so we've been following uh, previous updates. Uh, these features all seem familiar because they're not new features, these are just things they've already built and they're like uh, moving around. Uh, the next thing they're talking about is uh, the log uh, system they've set up. Uh, so you might remember uh, when they launched the new version of the settlement layer and the wallet, they added a way for you to send logs if something goes wrong. There's like a button that comes up saying, like, please send us your logs. And uh, these logs will be reported to IOHK. And they've gotten so many logs that they now need a way to like uh, automatically uh, filter these logs and bucket them by issue. So they've created a new project called Log Classifier. Uh, you can see the code for this uh, classification here if you're interested in checking it out. Uh, next, we're talking about upgrading the compiler. We've seen this in uh, previous weeks also. Uh, so they're not only upgrading the compiler, they're upgrading like a bunch of other different stuff. This is still just like last week, uh, stuck on the uh, continuous integration, which is failing. Uh, so they're trying to get help from some other people on the team to try and look into why the continuous integration is failing. Uh, but the feature itself should be done from what I understand. Uh, next up, they're talking about block syncing. So we've seen this in previous years also where they did the feature, then the testing and the benchmarking. So they're saying the initial implementation is complete. And uh, yeah, right now they're just doing some review of this. So this is like a nice note that this feature is like a mostly wrapped up and they're just doing a you know, final review hopefully. Uh, next one is the exchange onboarding. So uh, uh, I show you guys in a previous week uh, that they released a new version of the API for the uh, settlement layer and, uh, and the wallet. So I showed you guys the website where we can see this new API. And as usual, by the way, if you're interested in all these links, uh, they're all in the video description. So if you go to the video description, you can see uh, links to everything I'm talking about. So they have this new API, right? And uh, they're still working on it. It's mostly done. They have like a better version out right now where they're using to like, collect feedback. Uh, but they still got like a quite a bit of stuff going on it. Uh, stuff about to work like it's still going on, I should say. Uh, so one of them is like this uh, V1 for a client uh, for the wallet API. So this is using the uh, Servant uh, Haskell library, which I briefly introduced to you guys last week. Which is library where you basically like uh, give it a specification and it'll generate the uh, documentation, the client, the server. Like, it's kind of like a swagger if you ever use that uh, for trying to automatically generate uh, code and documentation from a spec. So if you're interested in this, you can go check out this pull request. Uh, they also added, uh, you know, exchange documentation for onboarding. So I showed you guys this last week where they actually now have like a document for how exchanges can onboard to start using uh, or start listing ADA. Uh, so they've been working more on this. Uh, next up, they have like some more uh, updates to the uh, API, which is fine. Uh, they have some uh, work to add uh, endpoints for external variants, which I think is actually pretty exciting because the reason why is because uh, these external variants are useful for like a light clients, hardware wallets, these kinds of things. Uh, so actually, if you look uh, down here, uh, I showed you guys this last week, but they've been working on a technical specification for unified backend architecture. And what this really means is that they're trying to figure out how to set up the backend to work well with stuff like lightweight wallets and this kind of stuff. And because they're also working on this like, uh, Sorry, this, this other feature for the API for the external variants to try and support these like uh, lightweight walls and these kinds of things. They're giving me some hope that they're, they're like uh, investing some time into this, which is a feature a lot of people have been asking for. I think this is pretty exciting. Uh, they also have this other thing where they're adding uh, endpoint to retrieve address uh, minute information. I believe this is for the uh, wallet generation system they're using which is uh, basically you use a 12 word mnemonic, right? And uh, that has some metadata associated with it. I think this is just like a way to access that from the API. Uh, they've also implemented some feedback from the API. So as I said earlier, 
Uh, this is like a better version of the API. And they're basically saying like, hey, if you use this, uh, it's a better version, but if you have some feedback, please let us know. So you can see some of the feedback they've gotten down here, and which ones they've like addressed, which ones they fixed, and what kind of feedback they've gotten. So if you're interested, in, uh, especially if you've given them feedback and you want to see what's, uh, what's happened to it, you can follow it here. Uh, they have also added some logging, which is fine. And uh, lastly, they added this like a uh, timestamp for the endpoint. Uh, so you might remember from last week, where uh, this was uh, not finished last week, and uh, it was like uh, one of the remaining items. And so now this is finally done. I think they mentioned up here where, uh, yeah, the filtering by transaction timestamp is not complete and the testing and all this stuff is planned. So it's nice to see that the API is moving along. Uh, they've got the new version, adding some nice features to it. And I think this is like a, a highly recommended, I never say recommended, but wanted feature. And so it's nice to see that they're working on it. Uh, next up is the paper wallet. Uh, which before we go into it, they say is, is uh, blocked by a, a necessary upgrade in the React Polymorph library. So I mentioned this uh, a while back actually. That this is a library that IOHK wrote for React, uh, which tries to separate the logic, the markup, and the styling into three different components. And there's like some problem with it, and so they had to make some updates to it. And this is basically this is what they're talking about. If you're interested in this library, you can go check it out. Uh, and that was required to get these paper wallet working. So in the past week, uh, they finished two different things. They finished this certificate generation and restoration along with the acceptance tests and implementation of them. Uh, so they're making good progress. You can still follow the entire uh, work item basically on this one pull request where they have like a giant list of to-dos and they're like slowly going through it. Uh, but it's nice to see that, you know, they got pictures up and nice to-do list. And this, this is like, this feature is making good progress. So hopefully we can get it in time for the uh, upcoming release. Uh, so as you might have heard, uh, they're trying to do monthly releases now for the uh, wallet and backend. Uh, so they're hoping to get this done by the next release. Uh, next up, they're talking about the uh, TLS. Uh, so I mentioned this uh, last week, I believe also, where uh, they're trying to uh, do some upgrades to their TLS system, which if you don't know, is like the next version of SSL. Uh, they've added this like a uh, documentation about how they set up the authentication, how they set up the TLS stuff. And so a few people have been like uh, complaining about like uh, the certificate errors. Uh, for pe this is like an error people have been having if they set up their own node. Like they're not downloading from the installer. They're trying to set up themselves for just like a testing purposes or for fun or for just like trying to develop features. They sometimes run into these issues. So if that sounds like something that's happened to you, you may be interested in like reading through this uh, documentation to see exactly how it works and what's happening and how maybe you can fix it. And uh, they also have like some feature work uh, where they're doing some like a server TLS check and all this kind of stuff. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, uh, yeah, you can check out these pull requests and see exactly what's happening. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, the other thing that's like a similar that's not mentioned in here is that they've been doing a lot of work on the uh, Cardano infrastructure for the uh, diffusion layer. So if you're interested in kind of this networking stuff, you may be interested in this. Uh, but the diffusion layer is essentially the mechanism by which uh, nodes on the Cardano network communicate with each other. That is to say, like, uh, if I launch my wallet now, I'm connecting to somebody else to uh, sync my blocks based on, like, uh, the view they have and this kind of stuff. And uh, it's notably, that's like what the subscription status is, which they made an update to last week. So this is like a, they start, they made some updates this last week, and now it's done. And I'll show you guys this briefly. And they also uh, have been working on this other change, uh, where essentially uh, the configuration for this diffusion layer used to be all uh, compile time settings, uh, but to be able to enable them to do like a faster iteration, faster testing. They uh, move some of these settings to be like uh, generated or not generated, but like uh, looked up at runtime, and it was kind of like apparently kind of a hack to do this, and so now they're going back and kind of like uh, cleaning this up. And uh, this is not just one pull request, by the way. This is like a pull request that's split into multiple parts. You can go find like a parts one to three. But if you're interested in this like uh, networking stuff, uh, you may be interested in checking out the work that they've been doing on this part of the Cardano element layer. Uh, next up, they're talking about the uh, Linux installer, which is just, they're just saying they've like uh, been doing some testing and everything's going well. 
and uh yeah which is like a nice hopefully this will be uh, out by the next uh release coming up soon uh next up uh they're talking about site change so we saw we saw last week the uh paper they put out not like a formal paper but like a, a you know semi-formal paper uh for the site chains so if you're interested in that you can go look up their paper it'll be in, uh, in the description of this video and we saw it last week briefly uh where they're talking about uh you know communication between the uxtxo uh model and the account based model so if you're interested you can go look into it uh, the smart contract language actually is not written here, but they uh, released the first version of the Marlowe uh, smart contract program language. So I'll probably make a separate video uh, going into this in more detail, showing you guys what it looks like and uh, how to try and uh, get something running with it. And I think this is pretty exciting. Uh, next up is Reagan. So I also mentioned this briefly last week, which this is, is a testing uh, framework that they're using where it essentially generates test cases uh, automatically. So if you're wondering why they have so many uh, test cases, this is because like this is generating uh, test cases programmatically, I should say. Uh, if you're interested in like uh, how this works, you can go look up uh, fizzing, which is like the technical name for this kind of uh, setup. And so they're sitting there, you know, they're working on it. They're increasing the number of test cases, seeing what they find. And uh, you know, it's, it's nice to see this is working well. Uh, lastly, uh, Two more things. One of them is that uh, I mentioned a few weeks ago that they're looking into using DAL, which is like a non-turn complete scripting language, and they're trying to use it to generate the uh, installers for the var various op operating systems. So that pull request is now done. So it's nice to see that uh, they've moved forward with this. It looks like it's going well. And uh, yeah, so that's done. If you're interested in like a DAL and these kinds of like a scripting, uh, like uh, configuration setups, uh, then yeah, you may be interested in this uh, pull request. Uh, they've also been doing some more work on the wallet spec itself. So I've been following this uh, pretty closely uh, where they have a technical uh, documentation for what the uh, wallet is. So they made this uh, one change here, which is mostly about how to handle stuff like rollbacks, uh, history, pending transactions. That's kind of like an in-memory pool uh, so that's what they've added in this uh, specific pull request and they have a separate pull request which is uh, mostly about how to handle stuff like fees, uh, inputs to the UTXO model. So like if you imagine the UTXO model you have a few different uh, inputs you could pick for your transaction. So they're trying to talk about like uh, how to pick which uh, UTXO to use for a given transaction and how to minimize the fees and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in this uh, technical topic, uh, you can go check out the updates to the paper, uh, not paper, but I mean like the specification they've got going on. Anyways, that's it for this week. Uh, as usual, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, subscribe to YouTube to get additional updates. I've also got a Patreon running. So if you want to support me uh, financially, you can go to my account and set that up. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again uh, next week.